Grant, O Lord, that in the written word and through the spoken word we may behold the living word, you, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Numbers. We're reading from chapter 6, right at the end, verses 22 to 27. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The second reading is um, Psalm 91, and it's down on page 664 of your true Bible. And you read the whole song. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but he will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. End of this week. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, with that reading of the word of the Lord, we need to greet one another. You need to walk around and tell somebody you look much younger than the last time. And I really mean it. And I want you to look into their eyes. You can't just greet one person. You need to greet more than two persons. All right. More than two persons. Walk around, say to them, you look younger than the last time. You can't do it while seated. You need to walk around. <laughs> good, good place. Here. There is Victor. Let me see. <laughs> It's good to see all my good friends here. Sue, good to see you. It's good to see you, all of you. I, I don't know, those of you are used to me, so you are yourself, uh, you, you're feeling safe. But those of you who have, we've never met, you're just wondering, what type of person is this one? Where is he taking us? So you just relax. You really you look younger than the last time. I can, I can see that. Tim, are you still playing... The hooker in the in the in the blue boots, you know. Does that team still exist, or it's uh, I think. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see. Are we are we are, you, are we on Maggie? Oh, it's uh, Maggie's going to put you know some slides there. Let's hope that you know it's uh, it's uh, this IT is the last battle that we need to win. <laughs> All right, we, we've read, you know, into, in, in, in two passages of Scripture, that is in the Old Testament, um, uh, and the, I just want you to come there, okay?
Okay, it's coming. There we are. Okay. So we have Numbers chapter 6 and then we have uh, Psalm 90, 91. Can I test this one? Right, it's working, right? Perfect. The Lord bless you and keep you. Just want to repeat that. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And so they will put my name on the Israelites and I'll bless I'll bless them. And then we read, you know, in the in the book of in the book of Psalm. It's 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 a it's a very common passage or a common saying that we are some of us are familiar to uh, or are familiar with or maybe some of us may be more familiar with what is found in the new testament where paul says you know the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you i want to make that kind of connection at the end of uh, at the end of this sermon this is the time the lord is coming to moses and saying can you tell aaron Aaron came from the Levite family because priests were only coming from a chosen family or a chosen tribe. So the Levite family, you know, were the chosen ones to produce, you know, a priest. And Aaron came from there. And the Lord God is coming to Aaron and says, No, I want you, uh, he's coming to Moses and says, I want you to tell Aaron to bless the children in this way. Previous, you know, the previous uh, passages of scriptures are very depressing. Israel is going through, you know, some moments in their lives. They're feeling dry. They're feeling like, you know, Yahweh is far away from them. Uh, they are quite disoriented. Uh, but God is not far away. He wants to bless them. And he wants to assure them, I'm very much involved in every detail of your lives. And then he leaves them this blessing. And this blessing has been going forever. Even now, you know, if you go into the traditional uh, Jewish home, this blessing is taken uh, priority. Together, you know, with the Shema, which you find in Deuteronomy chapter 6, you know, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Those two go together, the blessing and also the, pron the pronouncement that God, we have only one God and only one God. So the question is, why, why did God... Bling, uh, uh, why did God, you know, bring this uh, this blessing, you know, in the lives of uh, the children of Israel? Why, why is He emphasizing? Why, why, why is He saying, you know, the, 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 the Aaron should bless his people in this way? I think there is something behind this. And when I was studying this, I I found it quite fascinating. First of all, let's start, you know, with the blessing. The blessing was one way of asking God's favor or God's divine favor to rest upon the other person that's what the meaning of the blessing was in the in the in the in the hebrew life that you no know, you bless others and you tell them that the lord the lord's favor is going to be on you the lord is going to go before you you can see you know from the tradition a hebrew who visit the home before he comes in at the door you kiss his hand put his hand on the door frame and bless that house and the ritual will be repeated, you know, when he's going out. He will do the same. Elohim, bless this house. Elohim, bless this house. Oh, Sharon, be in this house. The peace of the Lord, you not know, be in this house. I mean, you track it, you know, during the time of Jesus Christ, when he goes, you know, into this house of Simon, you know, uh, the, the very wealthy man, and uh, he enters this house, and he's gathered there, and he's talking. And all of a sudden, there is a woman that is coming with a certain background. And she walks in and she kisses no Jesus' feet. And everybody is in uproar. Say, why, why are you allowing her to do this? Do you know her background? And Jesus says to Simon, when I came in, you never washed my feet. Because the tradition was that no, a, a guest will come into your house, they will bless the shalom in your house, but you, in turn, you wash their feet. And remember, you know, we're dealing with nomads here. We're not dealing, you know, with, with your feet that are clean and nice. You know, we're dealing with, uh, uh, if like, you know, if you watch, you know, the rugby teenagers, you know, praying. You know, afterwards, you know, you look at their feet. You know, that's the type of the feet. You know, very dirty feet. They walk long distances. And you as a host, in welcoming your guests, you first and foremost, you know, wash their feet. And they bless, you know, they bless the house. And Jesus says, no, I came in here. You never did this to me. You never did this to me. 
So it, it's quite fascinating to see the tie between you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Remember, the Old Testament always pointed to the coming of the Messiah. Everything written in the Old Testament was fulfilled in Jesus. So my reason of bringing this is not to take you to become Old Testament Christians. Or what I'm saying, you know, the Bible is one. The Bible speaks to each other. You cannot understand fully the New Testament without understanding the background you know, of the Old Testament. Every Friday before the Sabbath, the father in the house will gather his family and then he will pronounce you know, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and grant you his peace. So it's very quite quite fascinating. There, there is the Hebrew text. For those of you who want to understand no Hebrew, there you are. You know, the first one is more than Hebrew. You know, I studied that. I was punished you know, for three years you not know, to study that. So I can read the first one. But the second one, Paleo, you know, Jew, uh, uh, Hebrew is quite difficult. The ancient one is just, let's not even go there. But all what he's saying there, you know, is the, the pronouncement, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace. That's what it is. Shalom is the, the last word, you know, the last word out there. So that's that's quite 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 interesting, you know, when, when, when you when you look when you look at that. So I want us to walk walk with me uh, a little bit in this. It will be sort of like you know a teaching. I won't take much of a time, but I want you to walk step by step into this. What I call the five important actions that you find in this blessing, which is quite relevant, you know, for us today as Christians as the new Israel of God, as the new redempt people of God. Because this is just not for those people, it is also, you know, for, for us. Number one, we start with the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord bless and keep you. Okay. Can you open? There you are. Okay. We are done there. The Lord bless and keep. What, what, what does that mean? Bless and keep. Again, you know, from the Hebrew, Barach, you know, which means, you know, a blessing. What you have to understand here is that, you know, it was a picture of the, the nomadic Hebrew people in the wilderness as they're traveling long distances and all of a sudden they are thirsty and they can't find somewhere to get, you know, to get the water. So they are looking everywhere. They're looking everywhere. All of a sudden, in a known place, there they are, they find a well. And with their camels, they are coming there. They don't know how to draw the water, you know, from the well. And from the village, all of a sudden come, you know, the villagers. They are coming to the well. And then they come and, 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 and will come, you know, these, these uninvited guests. And what they do, you know, that you know, the camels, you know, kneel down in order to have a drink. And the, the riders climb off the, 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 the camel's back. And they're given water. So, so the word bless comes from that, no, I give it to you when you don't deserve it. So blessing comes with the favor. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing you favor. You are almost, you know, thirsty, you know, to death. But I'm doing you favor. You found this well where you never expected it. It was not supposed to be there. All of a sudden, it's right in front of you at the time you need, you need it most. That's the word blessed, Barak. In other words, you know, giving to somebody who does not deserve it. Giving to somebody who is almost you know, at the brink of giving up. Giving to somebody who is on that crossroads where it's not working. I've tried this, I've tried this, no, it's not working. So when we say, the Lord bless you, it means that you no know, may the Lord just in, in, intervene in your life. Wherever you are at, whatever you are feeling, whatever crossroads that you may be walking in, Whatever things you know, that are bundled up you know, in your mind or in your heart, in your families, you know, in your business, things are not working out. May the Lord bless you. In other words, may He come through for, right, for you. May He come in. May He just walk in in that place where you least expect. You're almost giving up. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Barak, Elohim, Barak. The Lord bless you. The Lord come through for you. The Lord just you know, intervene in your life. Don't give up. Because just around the corner, you find a well. And there are ladies there that will come from nowhere to give you. You know, it's a picture of Jesus seated at the well, you remember? In John, where he's seated there, he's very thirsty. All of a sudden, there comes you know, a Samaritan woman. And then he asks her, you know, give me water. He's being rude here, according you know, to the culture. 
So do, do not be surprised when the Samaritan says, you can't ask me water. Because what happens in terms of the blessing, you as a as, as person looking for, you don't ask. They offer it to you. That's why the, the woman was really in uproar right from the beginning. Because Jesus was just, you know, killing all the culture there. He, he really went against, against the culture you know, of the day. You don't ask. You wait until you are saved. Barak, until you are saved. Because you don't deserve it. So when you ask me, you know, give me a cup of water. So oh, wow, why should I give you water? By the way, let me remind you, there is a history between you and us. Samaritans and Jews. Maybe you have forgotten. She didn't know who she was talking to. And Jesus just took her along those kind of runs. But what you need to understand is because there was a, a kind of a culture there. So let me, let me not deviate there. Let me get back to the, to the, to the word, you know, bless. Elohim bless you by providing your needs. In turn, what we do, we bless the Lord by worshipping Him. So what happened that, you know, when they're given the water, those who are given the water, they bless the people who gave them the water. By pronouncing, you know, the blessing of the Lord upon them. By pronouncing the shalom of God will be with you. It will be well with you. As you go back into your villages, you know, it will be well with, with you. Thank you for saving us from dying. Thank you for meeting our needs. So may, may the Lord bless you. So they in turn also bless them. That's the kind of a picture that we have with the God that we worship. That it comes in our areas of need. But in turn, he doesn't expect anything from us. All he expects is to praise him and to worship him. As we lift up our hands, you know, to worship our God. Blessing went along with favor and kindness. May the Lord be kind to you. If there's somebody here who is battling with their own lives, you are battling with whatever you, are, you may be battling with, whatever you know you're going through, may the Lord be kind to you. May the Lord just intervene in your life. Yes, you may be saying, no, well, it looks like you know, God has given up on me. No, God has not given up on you. May you begin to experience the love of God you've never experienced before in your life. May the Lord bless you. Elohim Barat. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord intervene in your life. May the Lord come just, you know, at a time you least expect. May you be surprised by this God. That is my prayer for you. Then keep. Keep is the word, you know, shamir. Shamir, you know, like the Lord Shama. You know, the Lord our keeper. It's a picture of a shepherd, you know, putting a thorn, a, a fence of thorns around the sheep. He's right in the wilderness there. It's too long to go back, you know, to home. You know, the sun is setting. So what he does, he surrounds, you know, his sheep with the thick thorns. And he puts them inside. And he waits there. He lights, you know, some fire. To protect them, you know, from the wolves, you know, that, that may be coming uh, to, to devour, you know, the, the sheep. That's the kind of a picture. So, when we say, you know, the Lord keep you, it means that, you no know, may the Lord put his fence around you. That's why, you know, Psalm 91, you no know, says, you no, know, he who dwells under the shelter of the more, most high shall be safe. So, in other words, may you be safe. May the Lord surround you with his presence. May the Lord protect you. When you go out and when you come in. That's why you know, there's a psalm that says, you know, The Lord be with you when you go out and when you come in. The Lord be with you when you wake up and when you go to sleep. It's that kind of a picture. As the sheep are coming in, the shepherd locks the door uh, uh, of, you know, of whatever he has built around them. And the sheep goes out you know, just like that. That movement. That is the picture that is coming in this blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord intervene in your life. But also may He keep you. May He protect you from anything else that may be threatening your life. The Lord guards and protect you from harm and from danger. This is what the psalmist is also speaking to. May the Lord keep us safe. If there is somebody here who is struggling with internal security. If there is somebody here who is anxious about whatever is happening. You feel exposed. Or you feel you know, really you know, something is wrong here. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord protect you. May you feel the protection of God. Then the word, you know, uh, His face. May He make His face to shine upon you. That is quite, you know, an interesting one. Making His face shine upon you. Again, you know, it's a picture of somebody coming, a father, a mother coming to the level of a child. Where the child is looking, you know, to the mother or the father. 
and then they meet face to face. In other words, no, it's okay. I'm coming to your level. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking down on you, but I'm talking to you. So that face, in other words, I'm showing you my face to tell you it's safe. It's okay. You are very safe in my presence. It also comes you know, from the background of a king where you know, people come to the king and the king welcomes them. If you read the book of Esther, he said to Mordecai, his, uh, his cousin, pray for me that I may find favor in the eyes of the king, in the face of the king. That's a Hebrew word, in the face of the king. Because unless the king invited you into his presence, you are not welcome. If you surprise the king, you are put to death instantly. That was the culture you know, of that time. So coming into the presence of the king, the king should look straight to you and say, you are welcome in my presence. And this is the picture, you know, when he says, no, may the Lord make his face shine upon. In other words, you know, may you, may you really find favor in such a way that, you know, God's faith will shine upon you. And when God's face shines upon you, wherever darkness is, it will be illuminated. It will be exposed. Wherever fears are, wherever anxiety is, all those things now will be put on their spot. And you find the favor in the eyes of God. Approaching the king. May he make his face shine upon you. I think we need that, ladies and gentlemen, in this dark world that we're living in, with a lot of things going around. We need the face of the Lord to shine upon us. That we may just, you know, find that kind of favor. I don't know you, I, I don't know if you have been to home affairs. I've been to home affairs, you know, because of, you know, children's passports and just recently to renew. That's the last place I want to be. Actually, you know, if I really need fasting and prayer, it's before I go to home affairs. Because, sorry for those who work in home affairs, you know what it is. If you go, you know, along the, the is it Mungeni Road, you know, you just see that queue that goes, you know, forever nowhere. And you wonder. And it happened, you know, that I had to go into those kind of, you know, queues. But what was amazing? What was amazing that, you no, know, you stand in the queue, you just say, Lord, you know, I'm a type A personality. And keeping me in the queue does not do me good. If anything, you know, this is the conversation I'm having with the Lord. Because, you know, I don't want anybody else to hear that. God knows me better than anybody else. Not even the minister of home affairs knows me. So God knows me. Lord, I'm your servant here. But you know what? You're putting me on the spot. Because something may happen here. I'm really on the edge. And anybody may just trigger, you know, the, this, you know may just touch this trigger. And things will go wrong. And there may be a David North, you know, Christian here looking and say, Oh, okay, that's M1. He preaches. Look at how he, how he, how he talks. So, for, for your sake, not for my sake, for your sake, Lord, can you just do something here? So, you, you're having that kind of conversation. You're looking at me as if you have never had that kind of conversation. <laughs> Look like, you know, you're very holy in this church, right? I'm just being realistic here. You know, I think you know what it is, you know, when, the, when those taxis, you know, come, you know, uh, in front of you. You know what it is. You become a very real Christian, I know. And some of you have done that very recently. That's when I see real Christians, all right? Yeah, be careful what you put on your car because we see, oh, there is David North Christian. There. So I'm having this kind of conversation. All of a sudden, unexpectedly, the Home Affairs you know, officer just walks straight to me and says, Sir, from here, we are starting a new queue. I thought he's saying, you know, you go home. Because that's what usually they do. We're just finishing here, you know. But he says, no, we are starting a new queue, so you go straight in. It just took less than 10 minutes. I was done. What do you call that? What do you call that? You may call luck. You may call luck. I call it favor. I call it favor. Because you know what? The Lord knew there. I didn't want to be in that line, you no, know, for all that, you know, for all that time. I had other things, you know, important things not to do. And these things sometimes happen. That all of a sudden, why you? Why you? So when we say, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. That's exactly what happened. What do the people see? There's no corruption involved here. There's nothing. Somebody just walks to you and says, you know what? Can I do something for you? And it has happened you know, quite often. Maybe, you know, somebody just, you know, gives you a way. Or you're at the airport. You're running late. You know that, you know, you don't deserve to be put on this flight. All of a sudden, you know what? You know, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. You know, you, you have a place there. It has happened. And sometimes we just take it for granted. You know, it's it, it, those lucky days. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. 
When the face of the Lord is upon you, even in those difficult times, in those moments which causes anxiety in our lives, He is there. And He's the one who makes us not shine out. He's the one who takes us out of a long queue. Well, I feel for those who are at the back of me. You know, don't even go there. It was about me that time. All right. It was about my, the Lord's favor on me. All right. I was praying for them afterwards. <laughs> afterwards, I started praying for them. It was not, not a problem. Okay. The face, Panim. May he turn his face towards you. It's almost an be gracious. It's the same as, you know, favor, as we have said here. I just want to go back a little bit. There we are. Be gracious to you. A picture of a camp where refugees are coming in this camp seeking for help. And they find healing in the welcoming king. They find help in the welcoming king. This king, he, he or she is entitled to send them back. But welcomes them in. That's the grace. I mean, in the, in the New Testament, you know, we say, you know, our grace is what? Favor that is done to you without, you know, earning for it, without working for it. Undeserved favor. That's what we call it in the New Testament. So that's what's happening, you know. When we say, you know, be gracious to you, may the Lord just grant you that, uh, the favor that you don't deserve. You know what you deserve, you know what you're going through, but may the Lord just, you know, help you in that moment. All right. So turn his face on you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be done just now. It's the same as the countenance, like we have, we have read there, Panim, towards you. May he give you approval. Again, it's a, it's a picture of one approaching the king closely. May he give you approval. May he welcome you in his presence. May his face shine upon you. May his countenance shine upon you. And then, lastly, but not the least, you know, may he give you the peace, which is the shalom. The shalom. This comes from the picture of restoring wholeness. Restoring you completely. Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, everything. May God restore you. So when you talk about the shalom in the New Testament, it's very connected to the word salvation. So when I said, no, the Lord has saved me, it means that the Lord has restored me back to the form that He formed me in the beginning. When we read, you know, Genesis says, in the beginning, God did this. But that image was destroyed when Adam and Eve fell into, into sin. The whole uh, uh, universe, the whole generation of humankind were attached not to that fall. But when we come to the salvation of the Lord, God restores us. He restores that image that was broken. He restores us back to ourselves to become the children of God. So ladies and gentlemen, as you are seated here, as you have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the shalom of God. You have the salvation of God. You have the peace of God. And that peace is the one that restores us. It restores us in every area of our lives. Are you hurting? Are you wounded by somebody here? Are you going through some tough moments? May the Lord restore you. May the Lord grant you His shalom, His peace. May you, may you feel that peace. May you be filled with that peace. And may you experience that peace. Shalom, being restored in every way. Shalom, the saints of completion. May the Lord make you feel completed. Some of us may be feeling uncompleted because of certain things that have been broken in our lives, certain experiences that we have gone through. But may the Lord make us complete. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Show you His favor every day. May the Lord make His face or His countenance shine upon you wherever you are in those dark moments, in those times of anxiety, in those times of sadness. May He make His face shine upon you. May you be the one picked to be in front of the queue. May you be the one picked to have things resolved. May you be the one picked to have answers being given to you. And may the Lord give you His peace. May you experience that completeness in Him. There is no completeness outside God, ladies and gentlemen. We find our completeness in Him. Don't even try it. 
Because some of us, you know, we try to do this to, to make ourselves complete. We cannot complete ourselves. We are broken human beings. That's why we need God in our lives. We may not sense that. We may not feel like that sometimes. But you know what? It is what it is. We are human beings. And we need that completeness that comes from God. So wherever you are, my prayer for you, may you feel complete in God. May you feel rested. You know, that shalom again is connected to rest. May you feel that rest that comes from God. Some of us know are restless. Things are going on in our lives. It's like, you know, watching you know, that dark. You know, there's a type of dark. It's very calm on the surface of the water. But wait a minute. Until you see what's happening down the water there. The lakes are all what? Paddling, paddling, paddling. Some of us may be still here, but inside, legs are... You know, they're, you know, they're just paddling there. Because you know, things are not going well. May you find that stillness in Him. So that even if the lakes are doing that, you know you are at peace. The Lord is in control. There are things that may run out of our control. But nothing surprises Him. He knows us. And He knows how to bring that peace in our lives. So my prayer for you, as you... Uh, look at this, you know, the blessing of the Lord. Just remember all the time that it is very, very powerful. It is not just, you know, for the old Hebrews. It has to happen for us now. Actually, you know, if you go to the Orthodox you know, Hebrew, they say this upon their children. They say this upon their grandchildren every morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Is it not going to be fantastic and wonderful if we begin to say that to one another in our families? In our families, in our relationship. The Lord bless you and keep you. Wherever you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. To our children, you know, who are going through some moments in life. I mean, we are living in a world that is upside down. I don't know how we're walking. It's like we're walking upside down. It's a confusing world. Our children are being born or they're living in this kind of confusion, confused world. And therefore, they need our prayers. They need our blessings. There's a lot of cursing that is going out in the world today. There's a lot of roughness in language that is going out today. May we replace that with the blessing of the Lord. As our children are going into the marketplace or into the schools or wherever, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. I may not be there, but I'm trusting Him to be there with you. I may not know what's going around that party. You know, a teenager is attending that party. And as a parent, you know, I'm very anxious what's going on there. The Lord's face be upon that party. It's out of my control, but I can trust Him. And I think we've heard a lot of testimonies where, you know, pe you know, children plan certain things and certain things didn't work and they come from, you know what, we plan this to happen, we plan this to happen, but that was going to lead to something. And they're frustrated. Well, I'm just saying, praise God, it never happened. You don't tell them that, you just go, you know, and just praise God, it never happened. Because it is for your sake, if that happened exactly the way you planned, you will not be here now. So we need to be praying like that. We need to be blessing our children. We need to be blessing, you know, our spouses. We need to be blessing, you know, our workplace, our business place, you know. This is a tradition that has con continued with these people. But we are the new chosen people. God looks upon us as new chosen people. And therefore we need to embrace the blessings as they were. In the New Testament, and I end with this, Paul picks up on this and translates it in a fascinating way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, this, I think, you know, uh, uh, the, the end of 2 Corinthians. And he says, no, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and deserve favor, and the love of God, the love that is just beyond our understanding, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us all. Be with us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May you experience that everywhere you go. It's the same blessing that Paul is taking in the New Testament language. God bless you. Amen.
we will do uh can we do our offering and then I'll, I'll finish with communion all right thank you is the worship team singing yeah let's let's do let's do offering we give unto the lord to his work and then we'll finish with communion it won't be long Dear Lord God, we give thanks for all your blessings, for the gift of your salvation, for the daily gift of your love, for all that you bless us with each and every day. Thank you for these tithes and offerings. We pray thanks for all who might receive and all who have given, that these gifts might be used in a way that grows your kingdom in love, and that your face might shine upon those in need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Morning, everybody. Just a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. I'm sure everyone's aware that Wednesday is a public holiday. We're voting, so the 10 a.m. Bible study will not be meeting, um, but the life group will be. You've got to show your voting mark to gain access, otherwise we're not going to let you in. Um, just to mention that it is Prudence's birthday on the 5th, uh, so ask you all just to wish her a very happy birthday and that also upcoming on the calendar is the breakfast event on the 1st of June organized by Billy I think just for the ease of um, dealing with the money he's asked that if you put your name on the clipboard at the back but if you could give him the money just mark it paid it's just going to make it easier for him to kind of keep track of that and then he can have the money up front so that he can go and organize the catering I'm sure everybody would enjoy a breakfast the speaker there is Chris Hall his father is Mike Hall who is a veteran of the Second World War rescued 2,000 nuns and priests and is now a hundred years old so I'm sure he's got an interesting story to share with us and then just um, a final note that next week we're going to be doing something a little bit different it's a gospel presentation through music so I'm sure that would be worth attending for everybody have a Lovely week. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll, I'll call the the elders to join me at uh, when I finish the the, proce the procession of communion, so that. Uh, when I finish the, the procession of communion so that they can be able to follow because I have something you know, for us to, to follow there. But before we do that, we are going to sing together the communion. Do you want us to stand? All right. Please, can we stand?
that be our prayer this morning as we break this bread as we drink from this cup may we remember beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ attend to the words of the institution of this holy supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered to us by Paul his apostle Paul says I received and from the Lord what I'm also passing on to you the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat from this bread and drink this cup, from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes let us now follow our lord's example in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and the lord jesus christ on the night of his rest, uh, arrest took bread i also take the, these elements of bread and communion wine to be set apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery it is a mystery it is a mystery and as he gave thanks, let us draw near to the Lord to offer our prayers of thanks. I want you to follow with me uh, into the... Can I tell it there? Well, I think you have the aims there, the C's, whatever. The aim is for myself, and then the C's for the congregation. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. It is right to give him thanks. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. Don't you worry. That's not for you to follow. Let us pray. Let us pray. It is right to give him thanks and our praise. It is not only right. It is our duty and our joy at all times in all places to give you thanks, our Heavenly Father. Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord. For He is the living Word. Through Him, You have created all things. 
from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as a human being and dying on the cross. You raised Jesus our Lord from the dead.